Okay, here's, uh, here, here's what we've got to work with in the engine compartment. What's interesting is that the uh, only the port engine uh, was I able to get a serial number off of. Uh, the starboard engine, uh, every place that there's supposed to be a serial number, there is no placard. There's nothing. So, uh, just looking at the engines, they're, they're pretty identical, except for the heat exchangers. The... Uh, uh, the port engine here has a four inch heat exchanger on it the uh, the starboard engine had a three inch uh, it's partially off right now heat exchanger on it so that'll probably get changed out uh no don on the iboat forum uh, sent me a service bullet and to, to get that get that uh, uh, replaced we'll probably do that down the road here uh, from what i'm able to tell uh, these are uh, mcm 165 mer cruisers four cylinders and uh, uh, I'm told that they're actually pretty decent engines. Uh, so kind of looking forward to, to getting some work going on with those things. So this, this is kind of what I got to work with here. Uh, the engines are pretty much, uh, they're mostly unbolted right now. They're just about ready to pull out. Uh, I got I to gotta pull these exhaust risers off, uh, the elbows and stuff. Uh, that's got to come off to make room, get clearance room. Uh, ring gears are already in. I've got two brand new starters. Uh, the, there was one starter installed on the, uh, the starboard engine, and I pulled it off. Uh, got to looking at it, and then the, the guy that I bought the boat from actually gave me a sec two other starters. But uh, you know the knucklehead, uh, my gosh, he, those were automotive starters in this marine application, which is a definite no-no. Uh, so anyway, I've got a, I've got two. Uh, uh, rebuilt uh, marine starters for these engines going in. Uh, new ring gears have already been purchased. Uh, this thing did not have a blower in it, which is another no-no, so I'm going to have to put a new blower in it. Uh, and then uh, the trim system, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to get creative, uh, use some of my electrical and my avionics background to figure out the wiring uh, for the, uh, the trim systems for the outdrives. Figure out how we're going to wire those and uh, and um, incorporate the uh, the trim indication capabilities that we got. So uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, there were uh, he had uh, set up for uh, three batteries in here. There were two two batteries here that I, I pulled those brackets out and I saw that you know they again they just drilled into the wood. I don't like that. Uh, so I want to take a look at that and see what, what I'm going to have to do. I'm probably going to put some sacrificial wood in there so that I can actually glue down to that once I get this repaired in here. Still haven't been able to identify what that valve there is for. It's like some kind of an airline quick disconnect fitting. And I'm not sure what, what's up with that. But uh, the guy that had wired this boat, man, he just really didn't know what he was doing. You can look at this wire here, man. It has been so overheated. I mean, it's just, the insulation's just, it's just melting off of it. I mean, that's horrible. So, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to spend a lot of time in wiring here once we get everything back together. Um, so here's, uh, and the other thing, look, I mean, like the, uh, um, the, the the shift the cutout switch I mean the wiring wasn't even there and man there's just splices everywhere splices everywhere you can see that the uh, fuse there has been overheated um, just a lot a lot of cleanup work lots and lots of cleanup work it's gonna have to take off take place here uh, did have a uh, uh, an onboard charging system, which I kind of like that idea. And it's got a junction box over here for shore power, too. I'm not sure how that's wired in, but we're going to take a look at that. And uh, we'll, we'll get that straightened up. Uh, yeah, just uh, going to be a lot of work. Yeah, I know it's going to be a big project, but I'm really kind of looking forward to it. This is, this is going to be a lot of fun. So, okay. So, that's the engine compartment. And hopefully these things will be out here and oh another uh, hopefully by the end of the week yeah we'll, we'll, we'll go we'll get these out all right so anyway that's it that's it for right now and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys here in a little bit all right cheers hey guys it's uh still the 27th and 
Oh, uh, okay. So here's here's the problem. I went to uh, go uh, lift the front of the boat up because I knew I had a little bit of water in my uh, uh, in, in the bilge in the engine compartment, and uh, uh, yeah, because it's been raining and uh, the the overboard drains on you. One of them wasn't hooked up. It's my bad. So, but what I didn't realize was that the cabin of the boat and you know i saw a i saw a bilge pump uh near the keel about on the aft cabin area and i was trying to, try to figure out why they would put a bilge pump in the cabin so i was i would expect that the entire keel would be like one large bilge well apparently on the c ray it's not here's what i found okay well this isn't good as you can see had a lot of rain here and so the whole freaking cabin of the boat is just completely full of water. All right, so I'm gonna jack it up, see if we can get some of that drain out of there. Ugh. That problem solving. Okay, so I, I went down into the cabin and what I found was, oh, there's, oh, maybe 100 gallons of water from the rains. I guess it'd come in through the top deck that wasn't sealed very well. I, I didn't think it was going to be this much of a problem, but apparently it was. So if we have any more rain in the forecast, I'm going to have to do something about sealing this area up to prevent water from, from getting in there. I'll have to put a tarp or something up here if I don't have a cover yet. Anyway, so that was the problem. Uh, I got lots of water, and once I get it all drained out and start getting into it, I'm going to pull the fuel tank out which is located right about here and I'm going to see why the main cabin and the engine compartment aren't tied together why there's a separate bilge pump there uh, I, I know there's a bilge pump right down about where that hose is at but uh, it's it's so deep it's probably about 10 inches deep right there and I can't get to the wiring otherwise I would have just wired up the battery and uh, and powered up that bilge pump I couldn't find it so uh, trusty Harbor Freight went and bought my uh, little marine utility pump. You know, I'll probably mount that somewhere else in the boat later on. It's a it's a 12 volt uh, uh, utility pump. We use it as a bilge pump. I'll probably wire it in with some some piping and mount it back up and uh, back behind the lab or somewhere and pipe it as for an additional bilge pump. Uh, it's working pretty good right now. Uh, I've got it powered up. I've got water coming out of the hose to back in. So we're going to let this run for a little while and drain the cabin of the boat. Hopefully there, uh, I'm pretty sure there's wood up underneath there. Uh, hopefully there's not going to be too much uh, damage in there other than the carpet. Uh, we'll, we'll see. This is all coming out anyway. Uh, this, uh, this bulkhead here, I don't like that to the V-berth up front. Uh, I don't like where they've got the sink set up. Uh, this table and this uh, seating arrangement here is just not going to work for us. Uh, I've got to open this area up to where it's more accessible. This is really silly. you got to come in 10, 12 inches and then you've got this protruding right into the area that you would want to walk into the cabin. So that's all coming out. And most of this wood I'm sure is going to come out because uh, you can't really see it. I'll show it to you a little later. But right down in there, that one compartment, I still, I'm, I'm seeing some evidence of... Uh, uh, some termite damage in there, so uh, termites have been in here, and so you know pretty much all of this wood's coming out. Uh, yeah, so that's where we're at, uh, pumping water, and uh, we'll let you guys know how that goes. Uh, hopefully, it'll all be uh, pumped out in about an hour or so, and uh, we'll, we'll move on from there. Uh, actually, if the sun's going down, it's going to get pretty darn cold here at night tonight, so uh, I probably won't do too much more tonight. But there's no rain in the forecast, so. Hopefully, uh, uh, we'll get her start drying out. Okay, that's it for now. See, oh, just a little follow-up here um, on the uh, the, little, the the pump that I've got working in the cabin area. Well, the reason I went to uh, to Home Depot or Harbor Freight to buy it uh, because I did try. I tried to use use the hose that I had. I even I even tried the uh, uh, some some old hose that I had from the pool uh, to to siphon water out but it was such a big pull to get up high enough to come over the side of the boat and then back down 
I mean, even with my shop back, I wasn't able to get enough vacuum on there to suck the water out and get it started for siphoning. So uh, I went and bought the, the little $30 uh, uh, marine utility pump. And we're, we're pumping it out. And as you can see, the water's flowing pretty well. So hopefully in about an hour, you know, it'll be dry and move on from there. All right, that's it.